So, I just uh, received a note from a loyal listener, uh, Anise Kanji, Mm -hmm. that uh, there is a Scotiabank commercial with a tragically hip song. Yes. You are ahead by a century, I believe. Yeah. You're, you've heard this? I believe so. Your thoughts. I think this is the first time that the hip have uh, have sold, have licensed their music. I don't know. I don't know if it is the first time. C- commercial. I don't remember. We've been talking, you know, over the past number of episodes about a number of these artists selling uh, their catalogs to uh, to companies that will help to continue monetizing uh, their their music in, in in various ways. Whether that is, mm-hmm. I don't know, getting it on CD Baby or getting it on a on a a, a bank's commercial. Your your thoughts on on the tragically hip, if you have any? Um, do I have any thoughts on the tragically hip doing commercials? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know the business decision behind it. Um, again, keeps the, every time you throw this question to me, that's usually my response, which is, I don't. I don't know, I don't know the mo- I don't know the motivation. Yeah. If you had if you had given me you know a heads up that we were going to talk about this on the pre-show, welcome to the pre-show. <laughs> then I might have done some research. <laughs> To find you, out. you do research. Hold on a second. Wait. A minute. Okay, so I asked this question to walk off the earth uh, more than ten years ago. They were at uh, Tangerine, Tangerine Bank, and you know they had you know done some. They were popular at the time for doing. Uh, doing covers and putting them up on YouTube and really, you know, having a lot of fun. And I, I, I asked the question, one of the questions I asked them was this whole idea and concept of selling out as artists, you know? Um, and uh, what I was told was that, you, you know, th- you need to make money in this business. It's not just a, it's, it's not a labor of love. Uh, you know, there's still mortgages or rents to pay, food to put on the table and, uh, and all of these things. And so they said, if you can make money from your art, then more power to you. For sure. You know? So, yeah, so... I don't, I don't know. If, never... I don't know if selling your songs to a commercial is "quote unquote" selling out. I think, I think there are people that believe it is. Yeah, of course. Yeah, sure. that's why we asked the question. For sure. I mean, the amount of royalties I make more Jeff because he was a songwriter for the intro and, and exit song for "Welcome to the Music" from the band The Life. I mean, it's it's insane the royalty checks we get from that. Yeah. So you, you don't necessarily. We sold out. <laughs> we, I mean, I had to ask Jeff's permission to sell out, but we sold out. Yes, yes, yeah. Your pay, your payment is is uh, is I allow you to be my friend every Tuesday evening for wow. an hour. <laughs> Sometimes an hour and fifteen minutes. <laughs> wow. wow. But no, it's um, my opinion on artists monetizing their music however they want to it's up to them you know if if they want to um you know put it in a movie awesome they want to put it on a commercial great uh i don't think we should have a problem uh with that because you know this whole space has changed it's you know a lot of people are still getting music for free or not necessarily paying yep. for it. Those who are paying for it, maybe it's not a lot, right? Like, excuse me, I, you know, use Spotify 
not paying for, but you know, accessing it through a, a an app that the music industry has has bought into. Um, and I know they're not making a lot of money, the artists, through through that app. Um, you know, and, and so there's all of these uh, things that the the artists are up against. And so, you know, to make money however they need to is, is I'm cool with that myself. Mm-hmm. Um, one question that I didn't ask our last guest, um, we had uh, the author of, um, oh my goodness, I got to look through Love my her mind. madly. Love her madly. Thank you very much. Bill Cosgrave, um, John Densmore, the drummer of The Doors, um, he sued the other members because he felt that having the music on commercials would be selling out and that The Doors music should not be on commercials. So that 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 I thought was interesting. So he wasn't happy when Love Her Madly was sold for an adult sex toy manufacturer? I don't know. I haven't read his book. Maybe we should get him on the podcast. <laughs> Hi, the following podcast is brought to you by Radical Road Brewery, the best craft beer in the heart of Leslieville. Find him at 1177 Queen Street East. That's Radical Road Brewery. Welcome to Lost Lost Venues Part One. Greg, you at what age, at what age did you start playing gigs? And and what was the name of the band? Uh I was started playing gigs, I think, when I was 16. And that would have been plastic dolls. Plastic dolls, which plastic dolls is a Z dolls Z. F an awesome name. I think kind of take off of the New York dolls, but sure. Yeah. Um, out of out of the schwa. Out of Whitby. Out of Whips. I'm sorry. Out of Whitby, Ontario. <laughs> Uh, not to be confused with uh, the Whitby and Ajax, actually. It would be Whitby and Ajax. Whitby and Ajax. I think I'm going to say Mike, Sean, myself, Jimmy. Yeah, Whitby Ajax. So was it local Whitby, Ajax, um, bars, coffee shops you guys played in? Um, not, not coffee shops. Uh, yeah, local local events. We would we would um, rent spaces and put on our own events. Oh, you'd rent your own space. Yeah, yeah, we'd rent like Iroquois Arena, the upstairs. And when I say Iroquois Arena, I'm not talking the arena. The whole I'm arena, the party, the party room, the kids' party room upstairs. Kids, it wasn't the yeah. kids' party room, but it was it was like the you know the, the where you'd have a stag and doe kind of thing. Um, yeah. What was your and we first rent, like the Italian club and places like that to play? What was the first venue, like the first venue that they invited you or that they finally agreed to this pestering 16 year old kid who was looking for a break? Like, what was that? What was that first venue? Do you remember? Yeah, it certainly, it certainly wasn't me that was driving it, but, it, but I think, I think the first real, not real, cause those were real shows and they were, you know, well attended. Um, but the first Toronto show, maybe that's okay. a better way to put it. The first Toronto show would have been at a place on um, college. Okay. Uh, is it college? Or the, the Orbit Room? No, nope. Larry's Hideaway. Is that College Larry's, of Gerard at that point? Larry's right Hideaway. Right beside the gardens. Right beside the gardens. No, well, right across from Maple Leaf Gardens. Carlton. But, Carlton. Carlton. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Carlton. Whew. Um, yeah, it was on Carlton uh, on the south side. And it was, I mean, it's like just an iconic, iconic place. That name uh, comes up in a lot of uh, like music biographies or music books mm-hmm. of Toronto back in the, uh, yep. back in the day. Yep. It's, um, it was, it was funny because we were, well, 
we were we were a new wave band um we probably had like either silver lame or white satin suits with pink frills probably a beauty um very beauty. very very new romantic very duran duran uh kind of look and this is plastic and, dolls uh, still this is plastic dolls and uh larry's hideaway was 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 um <laughs> it was a dirty seedy bar yeah his, history you know history will remember it as an iconic place uh, but it was oh i remember it was i mean i'm a whitby kid and i'm coming to toronto for my first gig and you walk in this place and the smell is just gross. You know, I'm 17 years old, I think at the time. And yeah, it was, uh, and it's dirty and, and, and awesome all at once. I had, had to skip school for the afternoon. Did Irene and Peter know you were skipping school? Yeah, they did. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Cause they're yeah, two yeah, teachers, they're... right? So yeah, I, yeah. That's what I was... yeah, they weren't, yeah, they were cool about it. Okay. Um, I think they did. <laughs> no, I'm pretty, I, they must have, they must have, because I took the car, I, I took their car, so they must okay. have, they, they must have known. known. Um, yeah, and it was just like, I remember, I remember getting ready and we were in the quote unquote band change room and, uh, and, and I've commented on a couple of Facebook posts and stuff about this. Um, I remember this guy, the door opens. We're in this room. We got a washroom. There's a room. And then there's this door. We don't know where the door goes to. And the door opens. And this guy walks out of obviously his bathroom in his underwear. It's all he's wearing. Walks through the change room into our, our, his bathroom. <laughs> and you realize that the, that the band room, the band change room or backstage is some dude's living room between his bedroom and his bathroom. I'm 17 year old going, the hell am I doing here? Wait, like, was it like the, 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 the manager of the place was living back there? No, I have no idea. Who Just a was. Random I dude. think he was a tenant. There was like, there was apartments, I think in there as well. So it's like some random dude. And he's like, Hey, how you doing? Goes and takes a piss, walks back, goes back into his bedroom and closes the door. <laughs> in his underwear, still like like no oops, oh, let yeah. me go get throw yeah, on yeah. a pair of jeans or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's probably that's my favorite. And again, not again. And uh Larry's hideaway burnt down. I can't remember how many years later, not a lot of years later. Um, so there are a lot of people that have, you know way more stories and way more history than, than I did going there once as a 17 year old, but, uh, Oh my God, I've got tears. I'm loud. I'm crying here. Was that, was uh, that your that was first? Funny. Was that, were you guys, uh, opening for someone playing for someone? Were you on a bill with a few other bands? Do you remember? I, I think, I think we were, we were on a bill with others. We were, I'm, sh I'm sure we were the first band on, I'm sure we were opening. Um, there's no way we were anything other than that. Um, and I think, I think Sean mentioned something because we were just talking about this on Facebook, a bunch of us. Uh, we were talking about how glamorous the life of a musician on the road is. Um, <laughs> we, we can get to that at some point. But uh, yeah, no, it was... Uh, it, Sean commented something about he remembers... I don't remember this. I mean, memories are fuzzy from yeah. however many years ago. Um, he remembers us, <laughs> Mike... Uh, who went on to Our Lady Peace, Sean and myself and Jimmy, uh, who was our singer at that point. He, he remembers the three of us being under the tables in the bar because a bar fight broke out. <laughs> so <laughs> you guys are I don't playing. remember it. He does. Huh? <laughs> this is yeah. that one gig you played. Yeah. Yeah. One <laughs> gig. Oh, my God. And then the other, the other, the other thing I think that I can leave you with is I remember, so we, we didn't have a drummer then. Um, Jimmy used to be the drummer for the old plastic dolls. The old plastic dolls were like a speed punk band. And then the rebirth of plastic dolls was this new wave 
keyboardy. They didn't have keyboards back then. Uh, that's when I came in. And uh, <laughs> so we had a drum machine and it wasn't the 808, but it might've been the 909. The 808 being, the 808 being an iconic, iconic as we've talked about drum yep. machine. Um, so I think I had the 909. It might've been the 707. I can't remember. <laughs> and we had all the, uh, all the, like everything set up and I got the, the, the drum machine on my keyboard rack and or keyboard stand and everything else. And uh, we're about to come out. I walk out. I press play on the drum machine, whatever, whatever the beat yeah. was, you know, Sean and Mike come out, they grab their, their instruments and they start playing and Jim comes out and he's dancing across the stage and he steps on the power cord. <laughs> the drum machine goes out. So here we are, these, these kids from Whitby in these like, like silver lame suits in a dingy bar in downtown Toronto or downtown ish Toronto um, with a drum machine and silence. <laughs> and we somehow we made it out alive. And I think that's, I think that's, that's, that could sum up my memory, my memories. The so plastic dolls. Was that, that's in the, that's not the nineties yet. Is it? No, no, no. This would have been 80 mid, mid to late eighties, mid to late eighties at Larry's hideaway on Carlton. Tripping over power cords. Oh, no, it wasn't. Yeah, no, it would definitely been mid. It'd be early to mid, if I think about it. Mid, hiding, mid, mid hiding under tables, wearing uh, makeup and white sequenced Lots outfits. of makeup. Lots, lots of, makeup, of makeup, for sure. Yeah. Back in the day, that was of, it, Lots right? of hairspray. Had lots of final <laughs> net. We kept final net ultra hold on the shelves for many years. And your your hair is still like amazing. You still have your hair. I do have my hair. You would think maybe all it was of the, maybe it was all, the final net. Yeah. <laughs> Mike has his hair. Sean has his hair. Jimmy has his hair. Jeff has his hair. Jeff was later on, but in in the band timeline. But yeah. So listen, let's let's go through. Let's end it off by going through all the members you played with. Plastic dolls. Uh, what are they? What are they up to now? Do you know? Uh, so Sean bass player is a, uh, OPP officer, uh, Mike Turner, who, as I mentioned earlier, went on to form Our Lady Peace with Rain, uh, and he's doing a lot of production from the house. He did have the pocket studios down in the pocket, well, actually south of the pocket, uh, and then moved that into his house. And I know I, the last project I know he was working on was, he was mixing the Mark Knopfler tour uh, audio each day. And I think what he was doing was mixing it down and then putting it up online. And then people could go and buy their, their, um, the show that they just went and saw or, or download the show that they just went and saw. Which oh, nice. again, when we talk about monetization, That's we started this gig. off with very interesting from a monetization perspective. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, Jimmy is Jimmy played what? He was a singer. He was a singer. He was the drummer originally. Singer, okay. Yeah. And then uh and in fact his son, his son has uh taken up in his dad's steps and uh really, you know, has 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 you know very active in songwriting and recording and re releasing his own music, which is awesome. Nice. So I think Jim's really, you know, supporting his son Jackson. Jackson with that cool and who else who else was in the band that was that was plastic dolls plastic dolls i think I, yeah plastic dolls was just the four of us okay uh cool yeah awesome man and that my friends is volume one episode one of uh greg and lost venues exclusively on the Welcome to the Music podcast, brought to you by Coke Zero. And where can people find Welcome to the Music podcast if they'd let, they're interested? If people are interested, they can go to welcometothemusic.com. And uh, from there, you'll find links to your favorite podcast player. So if you are uh, as Greg is a uh, iPhone enthusiast, 
You might like I, Apple Podcasts, or I know a lot of people on the iPhone like to use Pocket Casts as well. Great uh, podcast player that I use on my Android. But you can also find us on Spotify and uh, everywhere else that podcasts can be found, including SoundCloud. 1985. Oh, no. Shit. What? I blew it. (laughs) We're still recording, right? Yeah. Okay. And then later on, Jamie Pugh joined the band when we decided to replace the drum machine with a real drummer. And no one's tripping over Jamie is what you're saying. And nobody's tripping over Jamie. Perfect. Jamie's job, Jamie's job today still is so that nobody trips over people. 